please be advised there are spoilers ahead related to the property being watched and or discussed. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Asha Media TV. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. You get three welcomes. This is where I like to watch, react, and just share my two cents about a couple of properties related to sci-fi and fantasy, respectively. So in today's video, I am going to press play on episode 13 from the first season of Fringe. This one is titled The Transformation. Now, normally I would give you somewhat of an informal recap as to what I've understood from the previous episodes that I've watched, at least for the last two. However, I've decided to scratch that out because I don't think it's necessary. I think I'm over talking things. <laughs> Meaning that a lot of what I say in my informal recap kind of filters into what I say at the end of my reaction videos. And I already have the bad habit of being a bit repetitive and redundant on things. And so let me try to minimize that, all right? Therefore, without further ado, here is my condensed reaction to episode 13. Ooh, another airplane. Like episode one. dollars that is a ripoff I'm so curious what craziness is gonna happen technology that's what he just wrote right capture dangerous uh, a bloody nose oh oh okay here comes the fireworks What? Did he just check his teeth? Is he wearing dentures? Oh. What does that mean? Let's see. He's tested himself for something. What's the problem? I'm in trouble. There's something happened that I don't have the time or the permission to explain to you. What is it? You need to listen to me very carefully. I need you to go to the passengers. I need you to collect as many sedatives or tranquilizers as you can. We will die, all of us, if you don't do what oh, I say. Bro. Sir, mm -mm. it sounds like that is in violation of FAA regulations. Why do you feel like I care about that? Maybe isolate him? Sir, I'm going to need you to calm down. You're going to scare the passengers. They should be scared. What weapons do you have? Yeah, it's mostly... What weapons? Oh, Lord. We have a taser in the cockpit, which I will use on you if you don't calm down. The taser won't do a thing. It'll just piss me off. Is he going to turn into the Hulk or something? I'm going into that bathroom. You keep me in there. You keep that door closed. Get whatever sedatives you can as soon as you can. You go in that bathroom, sir. I am not messing around! You keep me in there, away from the other passengers. Get the drugs. Quick. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Dude, why did you take a flight with that risk? I'm so thrilled to see what he's going to become. Shit. He's literally transforming. Yes! This is great. If this is like a modern day werewolf situation. He's gonna bust out. Captain says we should restrain him, but I don't know. <laughs> no! Oh my gosh, no! That's cruel! That was like two seconds! But enough for me to know that he's gonna wreck shit up. Huh. This is gonna be a good episode. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like a mix, really, of that and a scary wolf man. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Kaboom. Oh, they're still here. Yes, 
She needs to watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> She's so adorable. Do you remember when we had that sleepover at Aunt Missy's and you found the perfume and then poured it all over? Was it Lola? No, Lola was the hamster. Roxy was the dog. Liv, what is this? Is this Mom's? It's from John. Really? John. Your partner, John? Does she know he's dead? Uh, he asked you to marry him? Uh, no. He didn't. It was a mistake. Suffice to say that it never actually happened. He was a traitor. The people that he was working with, I still don't even know who they were. But whoever they were, he was bad. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Is him being dead a classified thing, I guess? She can't <sighs> tell him. Greg was a jerk. Oh, Greg is a jerk. Yeah, Greg is a jerk. Hello? Where? Whatever happened up there, I'm guessing it has something to do with what I'm about to show you. It burned bad, your friends just thought it was an animal at first. <laughs> it's Sonic! <I'm> mistaken. <laughs> In the flesh. But at least you know it can die. Uh, I will say this. Friend here didn't start out this way. So the official word right now is engine failure. The pilot tried to bring it in for an emergency landing. The landing gear failed to engage. The pilots lost control. Zero incident with the works. works. What it does to you? It's a horror show. It's far worse than you can imagine. Ah, John's memories. It's a horror show, John. Yeah. What? You find something? Yeah. I think this is our guy. Useful now, having his memories. How can you know that? Call it my gut. Super gut. She'll definitely give Bruce Wayne Batman a run for his money. I would expect whatever caused this mutation. Oh my gosh. It completely altered his internal organs. It's like the abomination. Evidence of an extra girl, you were told me. Possibly at this Texas. Meaning he had a colossal nosebleed. I know. Hmm. There's something hard inside here. Inside where? His hand? Very believable setup. What is it? A tumor? It doesn't look fake. The blood's realistically dark, not light red. Not unless a tumor is made of glass. Probably like some kind of super chip or something, right? People, we got something. Simmons, fax me into public address. Wilson sent over the black box recording the last 60 seconds of the flight. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Our person's reporting a disturbance in the main cabin. There's Scary. Charlie, give me a second. See this guy? Daniel Hicks. He owns an import export company based in Chelsea. He's the guy that Marshall Bowman was flying in to meet. So we need to bring him in for questioning. Is your gut again? What's going on with Just tell him. Obviously, you can trust him, it seems. This is gonna sound insane, so let's just put it in the category of crazy things happening in Walter Bishop's lab. Mm. Okay. John Scott and I shared consciousness. Our minds were connected through a procedure before he died, and some of his memories are still in my head. His memories? I see what he saw in the memory. In one of these flashes, I saw him with Marshall Bowman and this guy. Of some kind. Wow. <laughs> he just believes it. It's about yeah. a thousand questions I have in my head right now. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna bite my tongue. I like to see when he doesn't bite his tongue. It just goes off. He's really good at playing bad if you've never seen him play villain. Hey, how are we doing? Good. We got the blood work back. You were right. It is Marshall Bowman. Anything else? Whoever did it would have to have a deep understanding of cutting-edge 
genetics. I mean, it, it completely rewrote Bowman's DNA. Even if the plane hadn't crashed, he wouldn't have survived the transformation. Oh, he would have died. But we found something in his left hand. Here, I'll stream it to you. It's a glass disc, about the size of a nickel. I don't believe it. We found a similar disc on the DEA agent a few months back. I thought you told me that Bowman was a banker. Now you're telling me he's some kind of agent? Uh, I don't know. But Charlie's bringing in a guy who might be able to give us some answers. Right. I forgot about that one that she found. Have you heard what happened on Flight 718? Yeah, that's the uh, plane that crashed, right? Mm -hmm. This may be hard to recognize, but this is Marshall Bowman. He was on board that plane. Oh my gosh, it's like a gremlin slash Frankenstein porcupine. I believe you know how that happened. I believe that you and Marshall Bowman conspired to distribute a deadly virus, and this is the unintended result. I think you have me mistaken for someone else. Your nose is bleeding. Do we have a box of tissues, please? Um, <laughs> or a jail cell? <laughs> no tissues, no. Get me some sedatives. No. Oh, right. Yes, he did mention sedatives. Transforming. Dose. I want to know the name. Who dosed you? Hmm? I didn't hear that. Oh, I don't think that's working. Anything? Yes. As often is the case, there's good news and bad news. He's transforming. But I placed him in a medically induced coma to slow the process. Oh. The good news is that I have already synthesized a preliminary sample of an antidote. I'm testing it on tissue samples as we speak. Okay. I thought he was dead. He's not. Will I be ready in time? Well, that depends on your definition of time. If you mean before he turns into a beast, I wouldn't wait here on it, no. <laughs> Wonderful. Where did you get these? One of them was in Bowman's palm. The other one was on Hicks. I want authorization to exhume John Scott's body. John Scott? I think he may have one of these on him too. Mm. I think he was working with Bowman and Hicks. I know it's against protocol, but right now, frankly, I don't, don't give stop. a damn. If you don't want to ask Harris, then I'll just ask stop. myself. Yeah, rein it in a little bit. Rein it in. He is your superior. You can't dig up John Scott's body in the middle of a disc. It didn't go to the interstate. Where did it go? Massive dynamic. <laughs> yeah. Just being the defense department's biggest contractor is the massive dynamic is money to develop technologies and generations beyond that of the US government. For what it's worth, it was not my decision to keep this from you. Mm. Royals. As you suspected, we discovered a glass disc identical to the others embedded in Agent Scott's hand. While he may appear to be alive, I assure you he is not. Well preserved, though. We believe that the information stored in the disc's self-destructs when the disc's host dies. Oh. We attempted to utilize Agent Scott's body, his blood, his DNA, to try to retrieve the data. But the small amount of information we were able to gather seems to implicate Agent Scott as part of a bioterrorist cell. That's not good. So a plane full of people are dead, and our best lead is nothing. A chemist whose name we don't even know. It gets worse. <laughs> Can it? Three hours ago, French intelligence relayed to DC that an informant of theirs claims a major weapon sale is about to go down in Chicago. However, what the informant wasn't able to say is exactly where or when the sale is going to take place. What the informant did know is that the man behind the sale is known as Comrade. Oh. Oh, the plot thickens. I just got word that Conrad's planning on selling this virus. What? When? I don't know, but if I write a job to work in with these guys, then he has the 
answer. It is vibrating, which means that it's in mine. Olivia, you know how dangerous this is. Don't want to prep the tank. I'm going back in. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Be careful. Straight to it. Okay, that's good. Because I didn't want to see the prep work of it as well. We're online. I am going to try and guide you through John Scott's memory in an attempt to take you back to the place where he met our comatose friend here, Mr. Hicks. Three, two, one. Woo! <gasps> Zippity zoo! I'm in a bedroom. No, it's not a bedroom. Motel room looks like. This is where we used to meet. Oh, right. <laughs> John and I. <laughs> A lot of referencing back to episode one. <laughs> it's so awkward to watch yourself do that. That's crazy. Absolutely. This will never happen again. No. <laughs> Don't worry, he can't see you. Remember, you're observing a memory. He saw her last time. I'll be right back. And I love the explanation I saw in the in my YouTube uh, comment section about the plausible reason he may be able to see her. Like, uh, like no. Olivia, what's happening? John's talking to me. That's not possible, Olivia. He can't see you. <laughs> Don't move. Then what's wrong? She can touch the objects in the memory? Olivia, focus on the sound of my voice. I'm gonna ask you a question, you're gonna give me the answer. You were working with a man named Conrad. He developed a biological weapon. I wanna know who he is and who he's planning on selling it to. Liv. No! Oh. that. Okay, that's crazy, Olivia. man. I know it's a visual interpretation it's of her experience with his consciousness. So, it's fascinating how they're able to put this on screen. Olivia! Olivia, can you hear me? Olivia, Olivia. Mm, she's in some kind of alleyway. Olivia. <laughs> Hello again. I want answers, John. Interesting change of clothes. There he is. Who? Conrad. Uh... Monster. Capable of creating the horrible things. Weapons which he does for no other reason than because he can. That's him. And that's me. The problem was we were hunting a man none of us had ever seen before. I let that monster get away. I didn't know it was him. What mission? Who were you looking for? Spill the beans, you might as well. You're here now. Oh man, Hicks. The truth is, they were, and they are, government agents. NSA, secret task force. So was I. I don't believe you. It's the truth. If that's the truth, then help me. Tell me where the sale's going down. What sale? The virus. We believe that Conrad's planning on selling it. I don't know what's going on inside Conrad's organization anymore, but Hicks would know. Trust Hicks. We can help you. It's John. funny how she's accusing him of John. lying when it's his consciousness talking to her. They gotta stop with this tank shit. It's too dangerous, okay? Too dangerous. How's it coming? The cell samples membrane still aren't absorbing the inhibitor. We don't know if the animal's working yet. But it might. 
But Conrad could be selling his buyers as we speak, and Hicks is the only one who can tell us how this is going to go down. And you're willing to take John's word that you can trust Hicks? <laughs> <laughs> it finally happened. I'm not referring to a dead guy who exists only in your mind. <laughs> what if he's still lying to you? Have you considered that? If Hicks and John are working with Conrad, then maybe John is using you to take Conrad off. Or even worse, to get you killed. This is a bad idea, Olivia. This is so weird because it's like they're implying a dead man's consciousness is actively still alive in a sense. I know we haven't known each other that long, but you are one of the best judges of character I've ever met. So I guess the question is, what's your instinct? When you were with John, when you were looking into his eyes, was he for real? I think he was. I don't know any man who'd be buying an engagement ring unless he gave a shit. Whether or not, we're administering the antidote. Experiment. Sure. This is Agent Dunham. I need to talk to Broyles. Mm -mm -mm. Fascinating. <laughs> Sorry to wake you. Worse than adrenaline. Except perhaps lice, which is a nightmare. Ugh. This is an antidote. But I can't guarantee it will actually work. I do have a recorded IQ. 196. Oh, wow. You know about the work you were doing with John Scott. Now we need your help. An informant with extensive information on the players we'll be dealing with. His name is Daniel Hicks. And he has agreed to relay all necessary information to Agent Dunham using an encrypted and untraceable two-way radio which we implanted earlier this afternoon. Agent Francis will coordinate surveillance. The cellar man known as Conrad will not be there, but his intermediaries will. We have agents standing by to move in in corresponding rooms. Per regulations, no raid will be ordered until Agent Dunham has visual on the weapon. When she does, she'll give the go signal. That signal will be... Christmas. Yeah. We all look forward to see how she works that in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compelling uh, go word. Mm, Peter's not too happy. Understandably. You know, when you care about someone the way he does, you're going to be very protective. You didn't have to come with me. Shady deals with shady guys in shady hotels is my MO. <laughs> Typically, if someone is going to kill you, it's a good idea to have an ally in the room. I'm not scared. Being fearless doesn't mean you're being safe. Hicks, tell me what I need to know. Well, they're gonna be suspicious. Why they've never seen you before? You tell them you used to work with Anderson. Anderson, okay, got it. What else? And you tell them Ernesto flew in for the meeting, but he got called back to the basement and he couldn't come. What do you mean called back to the basement? Just say it. He'll understand. That's it. Here we go. Go time. I think the best way they can incorporate the word Christmas is through a joke, a really bad joke. You're Gavin. Susan, I used to work with Anderson. I was expecting someone else. Oh, Ernesto flew in, but he was called back to the basement, so he couldn't make it. Who's he? Who are they? <laughs> we'll sweep you and get the business. I love what she's wearing. It's gorgeous. <gasps> the hearing device? Ah. She's clean. <laughs> Peter. I'm looking forward to seeing how he interacts with them. Did you work with Anderson too? He's testing. They met in Oxford, in New College. Where did you meet on campus? Where they met? I'm sorry. I don't know that. I don't know where exactly it was. Mm. We met at the White Horse. On Wheatley Road, you know it? I don't recall. You would. Thai food. 
It's fantastic. That's where I met Alex. I can tell you what each of us is wearing if you want to hear. Where the hell did he come up with that? I have no idea. He's probably been there. <laughs> you can't underestimate Peter's knowledge. I have to admit, I was skeptical that you'd come at all. Well, of course we came. I thought it would be Paris all over again. Tell him that was because of the French intelligence report. He knows it. That was because of the French intelligence report. We know that. True. But this is a larger purchase. I have a feeling something's gonna go wrong. This just looks too easy. Hello. Okay. Come on, I would like to see you. When? No. He's on his way. Damn. Did I have the package? Why isn't she calling the raid? Because Conrad's coming. So what? Is it? Well, she doesn't want to scare him off. She wants to get him. It's a reverse mutator. An antidote. It would take you years to reverse engineer an antivirus. It's why the purchase price is so high. The formula itself is deceiving in its complexity. But we shouldn't have a need for that. It's only in case of accidental exposure. Which I assure you would be fatal. <laughs> oh, no, not the right time. Uh oh. Oh God. Give me my glasses quickly. What's happening to him? Oh. I think they're gonna get made. Quickly! Quickly! What the hell's going on? I asked him mm. a simple question. Who was in this to me? I need a name. Somebody, anybody else in your operation. No. Oh god. It's it now! You gotta improvise! You gotta improvise something! Come on, Peter! Think of something! Who was your colleague meeting? No. Somebody's gotta think of something. Okay, yes! Okay, okay, that's enough. Now just oh. tell him. Tell him. I am not getting greased over Ernesto's dirty little secret. What secret is that? Shut your mouth. Ernesto is sick. He's, he's dying sick, okay? He just doesn't want anybody to know. Yes! Shut all of it out of my face right now. I'm telling you. Who are these people? According to them, Ernesto's sick. It's true. He found out the day before Christmas. <laughs> I spoke to Ernesto this morning. Well, she gave the word. Go, get, get in there. Fine. Kill them both right now. That's a delayed reaction there. Scott says hi. <laughs> He's been manufacturing biological weapons and distributing them on the black market for years. And you caught him. I would think you could at least let yourself crack a smile today. Yeah. Slight smile. Despite the successful outcome of this case, John Scott's status remains the same. As far as this department is concerned, he was a traitor. Even if he was telling the truth, there's no way to confront it. I know the truth. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she'll have more chitter-chatter times with him in the tank, right? Big Tintana? Where is everyone? Well, they took that gentleman that was here to the hospital to recover. So the antidote worked? He started improving almost as soon as I administered it. <laughs> More that I can say for my own concoction. <laughs> I was hoping you'd do me a favor. No. No, Olivia. Don't do it. Please. If you did go back in, I'm dubious you'd even be able to find it. What do you mean? Your brainwave patterns are returned to normal. Your mind is finally succeeding in purging itself of the creature's Convenient. It would be a few seconds, minutes at best, and then you would never see him again. I need to do 
this now. Love, love, love makes you do crazy shit. I understand in a sense though, she needs closure. I get it. It's beautiful out here, isn't it? It is a nice view. We caught him today. Oh yeah. Really? I'm sorry that I don't. I should have trusted you. No, it wasn't your fault. I always meant to tell you. I guess I ran out of time. <laughs> I was gonna tell you, you know, after our honeymoon. There was one other thing. shows her. I know we can't ever be together. Not really. Maybe I won't know the difference. This is interesting and weird all in one. In my opinion, this is kind of like a ghost. Just... I love you, Liv. Depicted differently. Alright, nice way to end the episode. I concur with it! <laughs> Alrighty, so my thoughts coming up. Boy, oh boy, I had a hard time picking a scene in this episode because there are so many, well, I was going to say Easter eggs, but I'm like, I could be wrong on them because, <laughs> you know, I just watched the episode and I don't know if what I've interpreted is completely right. But I ended up picking the scene where Nina and Broyles are explaining to Dunham a little bit more of the situation with John Scott, what they've done with his body, what they've been trying to do in terms of getting information from that little disc and all that stuff. Because that scene revealed a couple of more things for me to assess going forward. First being that this whole thing with Nina seemingly being perhaps, a, 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 I don't want to say villain, but perhaps having ulterior motives, I think it's actually in favor of Olivia because she has shown preference towards her or more or less um, a, a keen attention towards Olivia. Broyles seems very fond of her and also very protective of her in a very fatherly sense. And after observing that scene again, it seems as if they're giving her information in doses because she may not be able to handle the whole truth, you know? <laughs> Somewhat of a Jack Nicholson moment kind of situation, right? Because Nina says in the episode that the reason why she never shared any of that is because someone else has actually made the decision to keep this information away from Olivia. So that leads into now a lot more stuff too that I noted. Um, first being, of course, a lot of throwback to episode one of the season. You know, with uh, Peter having the experience being in a hotel room, negotiating with uh, shady people, the plane situation, having some guy experience something terrible on an airplane, killing everyone on it. And the most obvious, of course, is the presence of John Scott. Now, when it comes to John Scott, this is what I'm understanding right now after just watching this episode. He's not a traitor. I think the clues are quite now obvious that... It's somewhat of a cover that it seems as if he is a guilty party. But now thinking back on what Loeb said to her in episode 11, and now this episode where they've made it clear that John was not lying to her. He genuinely cared about her. Olivia got the closure she needed. And more notably, her impression of him is now positive. So as a viewer, taking all of this into account, and I'm probably forgetting other stuff as well, I can only conclude that John's actually a good guy and whoever he was working for and whatever he was doing, I think it's going to lead up to something where he's trying to actually help or 
whatever organization he's a part of, they're actually trying to do good. It just comes off bad because of the way it's exposed, perhaps, you know, with these pattern situations. Uh, yeah, um, that's, that's the best of my understanding right now. So I'll leave it at that. Now, as for my Ash Emoji rating for this episode, I give it five. Five Ash Emojis because it was so good from beginning to end. It got my wheels turning. I love the throwback to episode one. It's really a good prep episode. Or I wouldn't say prep episode, a reminder episode to take it seriously during my rewatch to really pick up on as many clues as possible to come to some understanding of the season finale episode because that's my plan. My plan is to watch episodes 1 through 19, take note of what I can, review some comments from my dear club members and YouTube viewers, and see what I can predict before I press play on the last episode of the season. However, I also want to make it clear that I'm aware from many uh, spoiler-free comments, thankfully, on YouTube that season 2 apparently is very different so don't worry, I won't overthink it. I mean, I say that now, but I'm just saying I'm going to try my best not to overthink it and take in season two when it comes as being its own thing going in whatever direction it goes, okay? So just don't worry, I'm not going to go freaking out trying to predict, you know, the next four seasons of this, this show. Like any show, things change in every season for a variety of reasons. So there you have it. That is my reaction to episode 13 from the first season of Fringe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to reading your comments. And if you want access to my full reaction, uncut, unfiltered, details about that is in the description box below, as well as details on how you can go about supporting this channel if you're not interested in being a club member, but you do want to help me grow here on this platform. Until my next reaction video, I'm Asha, tuning out. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.